really standing at the at the the brink of an incredible change in the economy. Uh, we finally have digested all of this digital technology for the first time and begun to reuse it uh, as original material for something new. And that means that uh, the way that we get things done is going to change, the way that we uh, uh, pay and gather taxes is going to change because the nature of work and the nature of ownership because of the sharing economy is all in transition. First and foremost, the local on-demand economy is a promise to the individual worker they're going to have more flexibility in their life. It comes at the cost of working less but being paid more because you're working on demand when you do. So uh, we should be thinking, uh, instead of after years of my work week going from 40 hours to 50 hours to 60 hours, of maybe I'll work less, make more money during those hours, and have more of my life to do other things, including potentially have some on-demand people come into my own home and do the cleaning or things like that. And I would uh, tell everybody to keep an open mind about several things. One is we talk about Uberfication, which is the idea that you just interchangeably send somebody out to drive. And, and that's a great solution for driving, but it's not a good solution for a lot of other businesses that have to uh, rely on better relationships and deeper relationships with people. You know, the career is an interesting idea. Um, it's a fairly modern one. Uh, the uh, if you look at the life of Ben Franklin, I think that's the, the, the example I would point to. He had a career, we talk about it all the time, but he did not have one job throughout his life. He had dozens of different jobs, and he pieced together his living, which he was very successful at doing. And we should be thinking possibly about returning more to that model, having a portfolio of work that we work on, and being able to choose and, and, and switch from one thing to another which is, a, is an incredible opportunity to synthesize knowledge from different areas of, of expertise. The other thing is that the consumer is going to have a great deal of control over uh, the, uh, the supply chain that serves them. They'll be able to look into it and be able to say, uh, I, I have these conditions for purchase, and they may be a lot more elaborate than the conditions for purchase we have today. I could, uh, for instance, specify I don't want something that is carbon uh, uh, negative. Uh, in, uh, involved in the production of something I'm buying and set that as a criteria, then the market has to respond to me. So in some sense, we're going to be able to configure the economy as consumers and then wait for the right solution rather than take as good as we could get for the price that we could afford at any given time. So let's take the example of uh, the laundry business. Uh, just this past week, there was a $3.5 million investment in a company called Rinse. Rinse picks up your clothes, brings them uh, to their, their washing partner, has them wash and delivers them back, and I think they give you a cookie. Um, that suggests that there's a, there's a third party that's gonna be doing all this work, but perhaps that uh, uh, laundry will start to employ drivers to bring the uh, material back and forth on their behalf, and instead of you calling a third party service like Rinse, you might call your local laundry, but they have an on-demand capability. We're, we're going to be uh, challenged to give up on the idea of in, an insured livelihood, but we're going to be uh, presented the opportunity to build much more uh, diverse and potentially much more profitable livelihoods. We project that if you fully address the on-demand market just for household services, and if you did it this year, that's a $465 billion industry that doesn't exist today. That's 465 million in new, net new income that is added to the GDP. And by 2030, if we just grow this uh, up to 44% of the entire population using some on-demand services, it could add $3.1 trillion to the GDP.